are taking it back even further in human history this time and talking about some of the first humans to ever have existed. We are looking at the first stone tools, the first meat eating humans, and the first humans to create shelter while we cover part two of the top 10 extinct human species you were never supposed to learn about. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Australopithecus anamensis. Back in 1965, a research team led by Brian Patterson found a single arm bone of an early human at a site which was located in northern Kenya. This was an amazing find, but without additional human fossils, they were unable to identify exactly which species it belonged to. Skip to 1994 and another research team at the same site were able to find numerous teeth and bone fragments, and through these additional samples, they were able to determine that these were fossils of a very, very primitive hominin, and they were able to name a new species. This species had a combination of traits that can be found in both apes as well as humans. The upper end of the tibia, or the shin bone, shows us signs that it is likely that this species was able to walk on two feet. Because of the long forearms and certain features that were found in the wrist bones, it is also suggested that this species likely climbed trees as well. Based on their jaws and teeth, we think that they were likely plant eaters in general and that their diet mostly consisted of fruits and nuts. In our number 9 spot today, we have Australopithecus afarensis. I actually had never learned of this species before researching for this video, but it turns out that this is one of the longest lived and best known early human species, as researchers have been able to uncover the remains of more than 300 individuals. It is said that this species was first seen somewhere between 3.85 and 2.95 million years ago, and that they survived for an impressive 900,000 years, which is four times longer than we as homo sapiens have been around. More similar to chimpanzees than modern humans, the children of this species grew quite rapidly after birth, and they reached adulthood faster than we do, which means that they likely had less time for parental guidance and socialization. This species had both human and ape-like characteristics. They had more ape-like face proportions and a brain case for a brain one-third the size of a modern human brain. They had long, strong arms and curved fingers, which showed that they must have climbed trees. This ability to live both on the ground and in trees is likely what helped them to survive for almost a million years through climate and environmental changes. In our number 8 spot today, we have Kenyanthropus platyops. Sorry, I don't uh, speak Latin. This is one of the more mysterious early human species, as there is still so much we don't know about them. What we do know is that they lived in Kenya about 3.5 million years ago, and that they lived at the same time as Australopithecus afarensis we just talked about. Despite them living at the same time, Time, however, this species had smaller molars, which researchers believe reflects a different diet. This means that these two species likely did not have to compete for food. There are some people who believe that us as Homo sapiens are related to this species because of their facial features that are more similar to modern humans compared to the faces of other human species that existed at the time. Not everyone in the scientific community is convinced yet, but hopefully once more specimens and fossils are found, we will be able to get a solid answer. This species remains the only one in their genus, with their name translating to flat-faced from Kenya. In our number 7 spot today, we have Australopithecus africana. This is a species of early human that does have similarity to others on this list, with a mix of human and ape-like features. Compared to some of the others, however, this species had a rounder cranium that held a larger brain, and they also had smaller teeth. The remains found of this species signify that they did walk on two legs, but their arms and hands show that they were also still climbing at this time in the evolution of humans. This species had had males that grew to be about 4 feet and 6 inches, while the females grew to be about 3 feet 9 inches. For a while it was believed that this might be one of the first human species that hunted animals because of the fact that many of the remains were found among broken animal bones, teeth, and horns. But it was later realized that both these animals and this early human species were just victims of the same predators, lions, leopards, and hyenas. It is now believed that the diet of the species was similar to that of chimpanzees, with fruits, plants, nuts, and seeds, roots, insects, and eggs being their main source of food. In our number 6 spot today, we have Paranthropus aethiopicus. In 1967, the existence of this species was first proposed by a team of French paleontologists who had discovered a toothless mandible that was thought to differ from the other early human species that were known at the time. Many people kind of brushed it 
it off to the side because of the fact that it seemed a little too early to name an entirely different species based on one incomplete mandible. Flash forward to 1985, however, and we have the discovery of what is known as the black skull. Found just west of Lake Turkana in Kenya, this skull confirmed what those who discovered that jawbone had thought. This skull had a dark color to it from the minerals in the soil that were absorbed by the skull as it fossilized, and it was able to show a species that had a mix of both derived and primitive traits. This is when we confirmed the past existence of this new species, dating back to at least 2.5 million years ago in Eastern Africa. In our number 5 spot today, we have Australopithecus gari. With a name that translates to surprise, this species definitely wasn't one that researchers expected to find. This is quite a mysterious species, with much of what they and their lives were like remaining hidden in the past, but what we do know is that this might have been one of the first human species to use stone tools. And it doesn't stop there. While fossils of this species are associated with or were found with some of the earliest known stone tools, they were also found along with animal bones that were cut and broken open with the tools. This may mean that this species was also among the first to have a diet that included meat and bone marrow from large animals. That is a huge moment in terms of human history. I mean, it likely changed the development of humans as a whole. This species is believed to have lived about two and a half million years ago, and some experts believe that they may be an ancestor of ours. In our number four spot today, we have Paranthropus boise. This is a species that is said to have lived somewhere around 2.3 to 1.2 million years ago. Like others in this genus, they are said to be characterized by a special skull that was adapted for more heavy chewing. This adaptation is seen in the appearance of this species, as they had much wider faces and molars and premolars that are about four times the size of modern humans. They also had the thickest dental enamel of any known early human, which I guess is a fun fact you can use the next time somebody asks you. Because of their appearance and these features, researchers speculate that this species had a bit of a rough diet. Experts believe that while when they could, they likely ate many fruits and plants, when they had to, they also had the ability to resort to tough roots and nuts. While this species lived for quite some time on this planet and coexisted with other early human species, most experts agree that they are not in the ancestral line that led to us modern humans. In our number 3 spot today, we have Australopithecus sediba. This species is an important one when it comes to us, because some suggest that looking at the remains and fossils we have of them may just give us valuable insight into the origins and the ancestor of the genus Homo, which is what we are. We don't really know our family tree, so to speak, all the way from the first early human species, so this might just give us some clues that can help figure it out. Said to have lived between 1.97 and 1.98 million years ago, this species has traits that are similar to some of the other earlier human species we talked about, but also some traits that are more similar to us. Remains of this species show us that it is likely that walking on two feet was probably their most usual form of movement. This was mostly seen in changes to the pelvis, which shows us that this is one of the first things that really changed when it came to early humans evolving these more modern traits. What is peculiar, however, is that there is also evidence that this species walked in a completely different way than any other species before it. It is said that they walked on two feet, but each step they had their foot turned inward with a weight focused on the outer edge of their foot. This shows us that it might be likely that the way we walk evolved through a bunch of different paths, which is kind of cool. In our number 2 spot today, we have Paranthropus robustus. Back in 1938, scientist Robert Broom bought a fossil jaw fragment and molar that was said to belong to a previously known early human species. When he examined these specimens, however, he felt as though they were different from any of the other he had seen in his career. This led to him taking a trip to South Africa to explore the site they were said to have come from. Here, he collected many more bones and teeth, and he was able to discover this previously unknown species with a name that translates to beside man. Said to have lived 1.8 to 1.2 million years ago, this species still remains much of a mystery. Scientists still aren't exactly sure which other human species this one evolved from, but what we do know about them is one of their practices that they had with the use of bone tools. With these tools, there has been evidence found that this species liked to dig into termite mounds. Researchers are trying to find out if this practice was more regional or if it was shared across the entire species. In our number one spot today we have Homo heidelbergensis. In 1908, 
1908 in Germany, a workman discovered a jawbone that was nearly complete, with the exception of the missing premolars and the first two left molars. With more examination, it was realized that this was the discovery of an entirely new species. This early human species had a very large brow ridge and a large brain case. They also had a flatter face than other early human species, but perhaps the most interesting thing about them is that they are the first known human species to live in a colder climate. This species is said to have had short, wide bodies that were likely an evolutionary adaptation to conserve heat. Dated back to about 700,000 to 200,000 years ago, this species lived at the time that we know as the earliest example of when human species were able to control fire, as well as the earliest known use of wooden spears. This is also said to have been the first known human species to routinely hunt large animals. Another remarkable feat of this species is that they were the first to build shelters as they created little dwellings made from wood and rock. It is unclear exactly how they used these dwellings, but they changed the course of history with this new ground. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye!